All right, boys and girls, and welcome to another week of Sunday School. I'm glad you could join us. We're going to get started here with the song. It is, I've got peace like a river, all right? It goes, I've got peace like a river. And then we'll have more things that will go on. So there's going to be hand motions and stuff like that. So you got to stand up. you got to stand up for me where you are, and we're going to get started here. So I've got peace like a river. I've got peace like a river. I've got peace like a river in my soul. I've got peace like a river, I've got peace like a river, I've got peace like a river in my soul. I've got love like an ocean, I've got love like the ocean, all right? I've got love like the ocean, I've got love like the ocean, I've got love like the ocean in my soul. I've got love like the ocean, I've got love like the ocean, I've got love like the ocean in my soul. And I've got joy, you got a smile, real big joy, like a fountain, you got to make a fountain pose. Okay, so here we go, I've got joy like a fountain, okay, here we go. I've got joy like a fountain, I've got joy like a fountain, I've got joy like a fountain in my soul. I've got joy like a fountain, I've got joy like a fountain, I've got joy like a fountain in my soul. Now we're going to combine all three. I've got peace like a river, love like the ocean, and joy like a fountain. All right, so here we go. I've got peace like a river, I've got love like the ocean, I've got joy like a fountain in my soul. I've got peace like a river, I've got love like the ocean, I've got joy like a fountain in my soul. Good job. We're going to sing one more song before we turn it over uh, to Miss Gale for the lesson, all right? All right, we're going to sing our next song, and, add, and that is... This little light of mine, all right? So go ahead and get your lights out and shine them around as we sing this little light of mine. So here we go. This little light of mine, I'm gonna let it shine. This little light of mine, I'm gonna let it shine. This little light of mine, I'm gonna let it shine. Let it shine, let it shine, let it shine. All right, and then the next verse is hiding under a bushel. No, no way, no, we're going to let it shine. All right, so here we go. Hide it under a bushel. No, I'm going to let it shine. Hide it under a bushel. No, I'm going to let it shine. Hide it under a bushel. No, I'm going to let it shine. Let it shine, let it shine, let it shine. All right, and the last one is don't let Satan it out. All right, so here we go. Don't let Satan it out. I'm gonna let it shine. Don't let Satan it out. I'm gonna let it shine. Don't let Satan it out. I'm gonna let it shine. Let it shine. Let it shine. Let it shine. This little light of mine, I'm gonna let it shine. This little light of mine, I'm gonna let it shine. This little light of mine, I'm gonna let it shine. Let it shine, let it shine, let it shine. Good job. Way to sing. We're gonna go ahead and move on to the lesson with Miss Gale. Thank you guys for singing. And then we'll be back here at the end for one more song. I hope you guys enjoy the lesson. Well, hello and welcome to Sunday School. And we appreciate Mr. Jack doing some songs for us. And I'm excited to be here. And I'm glad you're here too because if you weren't here, then there wouldn't be any reason for me to be here. So I thank you for coming. And um, we, the past couple of weeks, have been talking about Queen Esther. And so today we're going to review a little bit. Then we're going to talk about the celebration of Purim, which uh, goes along with the story of Queen Esther. So let's pray and then we'll get started. Heavenly Father, we do thank you for this opportunity to come together and to study your word and to learn about the people that you've used down throughout history. And Lord, as we think about this, I pray that uh, you would speak to each one of us through your Holy Spirit as to how you would have us to apply this lesson. And again, Lord, we just 
thank you and we love you and we uh, thank you most of all for dying on the cross so that we could have eternal life with you in heaven. In Jesus' name, amen. Okay, I have, uh, there's a few things that I've put on the uh, internet for you to print off. And uh, if you haven't done that and you want to participate in this little activity, then you might want to pause this and go print it off. And if you don't have a way to print it off, then you can just cheer us on. Okay, and um, I hope this is gonna hope this is gonna work. But there are three things. One of them is for the older crowd. You know, you can read and write and all that kind of good stuff. So this one, this is we're gonna make a timeline of the events that have happened uh, that we've studied about before we start um, with our Purim celebration. And so this is a uh, reading. And then I have one that is pictures for, uh, and you'll still need to pay attention because some of these pictures, it may not be exactly clear what they stand for. And then there is um, a sheet to glue the pictures on if you wanna do that and put them in order. And you might not be able to do it all right now, but maybe if you don't get it completed, you can work on it with your mom or dad later. Okay, now that everybody is thoroughly confused, here's what we're going to do. If you have this sheet, there's there are four boxes, and um, the pictures on this correspond to these uh, boxes, and so all the things in this box are on the first row of the pictures. So we're going to read these, and we're going to decide what order they happened in. So I wanted you to have to think a little bit. So we're going to read, and so you will need to cut out just the first row. Don't cut any more out, or you'll get them all mixed up. So I'm going to read them as you read at home. It says, Mordecai refuses to bow down to Prime Minister Haman. Vashti refuses to come to King Ahasuerus' party. Haman is very angry with Mordecai and devises a plot to kill all the Jews, and Esther is chosen queen to replace Vashti. So we're going to look at box A, and we're going to decide which one of these four things happened first. So the very first thing that had to happen was what? That's right. Vashti refused to come to King Ahasuerus' party. So we're going to put a number one right here if you're doing the paper. Now, we're not putting down every single thing that happened because that would take us all day, but we're putting the main things. So here's a picture for you people that are doing the picture of Vashti. And she's mad. And she's not going to come to the party. All right, so after she refuses uh, of the next three, we see that it has to be Esther is chosen queen because she replaced Vashti. So we're going to put a two right here. And we're going to put Queen Esther over here beside Vashti. And I was planning to color these before I put them up here, but I didn't get that done. But if you want to color yours even after you put it on, that would make it look really nice. Okay, so now we have two left. Mordecai refuses to bow down, and then Haman is angry. So which one of those would have to happen first? That's right, Mordecai would have to refuse to bow down. So that's going to be number three. And then Haman is very angry. And uh, I, didn't, I couldn't fit everything on my paper, but it says Haman is very angry with Mordecai and devises a plot to kill all the Jews. Okay, so here is Haman. You probably can't see him too well, but he's, these people here are bowing down and here's Mordecai just standing there, and Haman's kind of strutting along. Okay, and then, let's see, the plot to kill the Jews. Here's Haman, and he's, he's really mad, and he's talking to King Ahasuerus, and he's telling him that there's some people around here that aren't following your laws, and we need to get rid of, rid of them. Okay, so now we're going to go to box B, and the first one says the Persian priest Caspar to see which day Persian gods favored for killing the Jews. And the 13th day of Adar is chosen. The king's decree is sent throughout the empire. Esther inquires about Mordecai's behavior, and the Jews, including Mordecai, go into mourning. 
Okay, so which one of those things is going to have to happen first? Okay, that's right. They're going to have to choose the day because the king can't send out the decree until they choose the day. And they can't mourn until they know there's a reason to mourn. So we're just going <clears> to, <throat> it says number them one, two, three, four. But yeah, I think we'll just stick with that. Okay, so the first one in this group is going to be right here. The Persian priest cast purr to see what, what, what day it would be the best day to kill the Jews. And then, once they have decided that, the king's decree, so that's going to be just right in order here. And then, it says, including Mordecai going to mourning. And when Mordecai is sitting outside the gate in sackcloth and ashes, Esther sends somebody to find out what he's doing and why he's doing it. And so, um, he... Well, she inquires about his actions. So, let's see. That will be number, no, actually the Jews going to mourning. And then she, after the Jews going to mourning, then Esther wants to find out what is wrong with Mordecai. Okay, so we're going to put those up here. Here is a, it's kind of blurry, but it's a picture of the priest casting lots. And then here is a picture of this guy reading the decree. And if you, you probably can't tell from there, but on your picture, these guys, the Jews, are really looking worried and sad. Okay, so they go into mourning, and they're praying and uh, looking up to heaven. And then this is a picture of Mordecai. Uh, we don't see Esther asking him anything, but that's the best picture I could find. So she goes to find out. What in the world is, actually, she doesn't go. She sends one of her servants to find out what is wrong with Mordecai. Okay, so then we're going to go to the box C. And I'll try not to knock the board over. All right, box C. Now, I want you to be thinking. I don't want to do all the work here. You need to be thinking, too. All right, the Jews in Shushan fast and pray for three days. Mordecai tells Esther about the decree and tells her to go to the king. Esther goes to the king, who extends the golden scepter. Esther protests that she could be killed for going to the king without being called. Okay, so we just had Esther inquiring about Mordecai. So what do you think is going to happen next? That's right. Mordecai tells Esther about the decree and tells her, to go to the king. So Mordecai tells Esther that's going to be number one. All right, now, <clears throat> when he does that, she says, well, you know, if you go to the king without being called, you can be killed. And I haven't been called in 30 days. But, so she protested that she couldn't do that. But Mordecai sends back, and this is our famous line, even though I don't have it on here now. He says, you know, if you don't go to the king, then the Jews will be saved some, some, way, some other way. But you and your father's house will be uh, blocked out. And he says, who knows, but that you have been put here for such a time as this. So, so uh, she gets Mordecai to have all the Jews in Shushan fast and pray for three days. So that would be this one. And then after that has happened, and she's been praying, too. She's been praying for wisdom and courage and uh, how she should go about this. So she goes to the king, and he does hold out the scepter. So we're going to put those pictures up here. Oh, and I, I forgot to tell you, as we go along, you need to cut your rows out, but you probably figured that out. Or if you're waiting for me, then <laughs> you need to cut the rows out. <laughs> okay, so this is Mordecai. Uh, she sent him some clothes, and now here he's telling her that she needs to go to the king. And then this is Esther, and she's saying, well, you know, I can't go because I haven't been called, and I could be killed. But Mordecai convinces her that she needs to. So here's a picture of the Jews in Shushan. They're fasting and praying, and then... 
here's a picture of Queen Esther, and she goes to King Ahasuerus, and he holds out his golden scepter. And so he says, Esther, what can I do for you? And so she invites him to a dinner party, and at the dinner party, he asks her again, and she says, she invites him to another dinner party. And so we'll take it <coughs> down here. We are on box D, okay? <coughs> Uh, on the 13th and 14th days of Adar, the Jews defeat their enemies. The second one says, Mordecai and Esther write another law which allows the Jews to gather and defend themselves. And during her second dinner party, Esther reveals Haman's evil plot to the king, and then Haman is hanged on the gallows that he built for Mordecai. Okay, so we know that <coughs> the last one, the first one, has to be the last one because all these other things have to happen before the battle. So <clears throat> I left out a few things here, but we know that Haman has to be hanged before Mordecai and Esther can write the law, and he can't be hanged until he's been revealed. So this has to be the first one, and this has to be the second one, and then they write another law that says the Jews can can gather together and protect themselves. Um, and then on the 13th and 14th days, the Jews uh, defeated their enemies. And uh, let me put these pictures up here so you'll know which pictures go. This one, like I said, this is <laughs> everybody pointing at Haman. The evil man is Haman. And this is a picture of the gallows. Uh, I didn't want to put a gruesome picture up there, so that's just them building the gallows. And here is Mordecai and Esther consulting each other about the new law. And then this is just the <clears throat> picture of the calendar of the month of Adar and the 13th and 14th. And if you'll remember, <clears throat> the reason they had two days is because... Um, Esther thought maybe there might be some enemies who were uh, trying to trick the Jews and not attack on the 13th. So she wanted another day to fight in the city of Shushan, and they did kill 300 more enemies. Now, the Bible also tells us that they did not take the spoil. Uh, <clears throat> they were allowed to take it, but that wasn't their goal. Their goal was just to defend themselves. Okay, so... Now, just as a quick review, before we begin our celebration, I am going to read these in the order that they happened so you can get the picture in your head. Okay, and like I said, this is not every single event that happened, but these are some of the main ones. Okay, Vashti refuses to come to King Ahasuerus' party. Esther is chosen queen to replace Vashti. Mordecai refuses to bow down to the Prime Minister Haman, and then Haman is very angry and devises a plot to kill all the Jews. Then the Persian priests cast purr to see which day the Persian gods favored for killing the Jews, and the 13th day of Adar was chosen. Then the king's decree was sent throughout the empire. The Jews, including Mordecai, go into mourning, and when Esther finds out about that, she inquires why Mordecai is in mourning. So Mordecai tells Esther about the decree and tells her she needs to go to the king, but she protests that she can't go to the king because she hasn't been called, and she could be killed if she went without being called. So she, But then he says, well, you've got to go because you were put there for such a time as this. And um, so she has the Jews in Shushan fast and pray for three days, and then, <clears throat> and she says, if I perish, I perish. So she was accepting God's will and, she, you know, whatever it was. Okay, but she, when she went to the king, he did extend the golden scepter, and he asked her what her request was, and it took her two days to get to the point. But uh, during her second dinner party, she revealed that Haman was, uh, had an evil plot against the Jews, and then... Um, they're just, you know, Haman had just built that gallows to hang Mordecai on, and that was why he was at the palace in the first place. He just came over to ask if, um, if he could hang Mordecai. But somebody told King, he said, well, you know what? Um, 
Haman's got a big gallows out in his backyard. Uh, and the king said, great, just go hang Haman on it. So Haman ended up being hanged on the gallows that he had built for Mordecai. And then um, Mordecai and Esther still had to find a way to defend the Jews because the laws of the Medes and Persians could not be changed. So they just wrote a law that they could gather together and defend themselves. And then we find out that the Jews won and then Mordecai, this is down at the bottom of your paper, it doesn't say it on here, says Mordecai declared that the 13th, no, the 14th, it says 13th and 14th, but it should say 14th and 15th day of Adar would be celebrated yearly because on the 14th day, the Jews out in the provinces had a day of feasting and rejoicing. And then on the 15th day uh, in <coughs> Shushan, they did. And so they, the Jews still celebrate this holiday today, uh, and it's called Purim. And <coughs> if you'll remember, the way the 13th day of Adar was chosen, it was by casting pur, which is ca uh, like casting lots. I'm not sure exactly how it worked, but um, <coughs> anyway, that's what they did, <laughs> and they chose the 13th. All right, so it's called Purim. <coughs> so this says Happy Purim in English. And this says, Happy Purim in Hebrew. So, and it's kind of neat or interesting that they read from right to left. So you see the exclamation point is on this end. Okay, so what we're going to do now is we're going to learn a little bit about how the Jews celebrate Purim. And you're going to help me with that. And I think you'll really like it. First of all, though, I've got to turn this over and i got to take... Vashti down and I got to take Haman down because that's where I put my sticky stuff. <clears throat> okay, so the name of the holiday is Purim and there are four mitzvots, uh, mitzvot is the plural. I keep wanting to put an S on there. Okay, and that is just means commandment. But there's four things that they do to celebrate Purim. And one of them is called a Mishlosh Mano. And that is where they give gifts to their friends. And it's supposed to be gifts of food and drink. And you're, um, <clears throat> now not all of this is in the Bible, but they've established some traditions. And, um, the tradition is you're supposed to have food and drink, at least two different kinds, and it should be something that's ready to eat. You wouldn't have to cook it or anything. And um, these little things here are called hamenstaschen, and that is right there. This is one of their favorite foods, and I tried to make one so I could show you one, but it didn't look like these did, so I just ate it. <laughs> but anyway, it... If you'll notice that the first part of this is the name Haman. It's pronounced a little differently, but it's, it's called um, Haman's pockets or Haman's ears even. There are different ways, but so I guess when they eat these, they're um, thinking about how Haman was destroyed. Okay, so um, that's just one of the foods. Sometimes they have it at their feast. Sometimes they uh, give it away. And I, I like this one, Mishlosh Manal. That's the one, only one I can pronounce <laughs> easily. Okay, and this one is Matanah Livinonim. And that is where you give <clears throat> uh, money or other things to the poor. So that is a gift of charity. And then the next one is the Purim Suda. And that is their feast. And there's lots of different things that go along with that feast. Um, and then the last thing, is, which was what we're going to do in just a minute, is the Megillah. And the Megillah means a scroll. And um, <clears throat> it's usually um, associated mostly with the book of Esther. But before we do that, I just want to show you a few other pictures of some modern celebrations of Purim. Uh, they like to dress up. So here's a picture of two girls dressed up, and they have big parades. Um, <clears throat> and here's, uh, uh, these are a little bit more orthodox. They're dressed up uh, <clears throat> more like Jews uh, in the old days. And they wear masks, you know, it's kind of like a 
masks that you've seen at Mardi Gras, if you know what Mardi Gras is. And here's three dressed up like clowns. I thought they were very colorful and neat. And oh, I know, uh, the homestation, it was supposed to be shaped like a three corner, a tri-cornered hat, because um, supposedly that's what the kind of hat that Haman wore. And uh, I don't know if you can really see that or not. And <coughs> we're getting ready to go to now. They, ha they make, this is a, called a grogger. Uh, it's a noisemaker. And I'll tell you what we're gonna do with the noisemaker. So this is the last thing on my list here of how they celebrate Purim. And Megillah, as I said, talks about a scroll. So they read the entire book of Esther, which we're not going to do uh, because that would take way too long. I just um, put down some pieces of it. But every time they hear the name Haman, they make some sort of noise. Uh, they, they might just hit some sticks together, or they might shake something, or they might just say boo, or they might hit, <laughs> they might have a musical instrument, they might hit their chair. Okay, so you need to get something to make noise with, all right? And don't make it too loud, but every time you hear Haman, you got to make your noise, okay? So let me get my scroll here. I won't be able to make the noises because I'll have to, I might say boo. Okay, <clears throat> after these things, did King Ahasuerus promote Haman and set his seat above all the princes that were with him. And all the king's servants that were in the king's gate bowed and reverenced Haman. <laughs> But Mordecai vowed not, nor did him reverence. And when Haman <laughs> saw Mordecai bow not, Haman was full of wrath. <clears throat> Wherefore, Haman sought to destroy all the Jews. <laughs> Y'all are doing a great job. And Haman <laughs> said unto King Ahasuerus, There is a certain people that keep not the king's laws. Therefore, it is not for the king's prophet to suffer them. And the king took his ring from his hand and gave it unto Haman, who sealed the law with the king's ring. The king and Haman sat down to drink, but the city of Shushan was perplexed. Okay, and then this is after Haman goes to Esther, oh, <laughs> after he goes to the first dinner party. Then when Haman forth that day, joyful and with a glad heart. But when Haman saw Mordecai at the king's gate, he was full of indignation. Haman's wife woo, woo, told him to build a gallows to hang Mordecai on. So the king and Haman came to the banquet with Esther the queen. And Esther asked the king for her life and the life of her people because they were sold to be destroyed. And the king asked Esther angrily, who dares to threaten the queen? And Esther said, the enemy is Haman. <laughs> then Haman was, a, was afraid before the king and Esther. And one of the king's chamberlains said, behold, the gallows which Haman made for Mordecai standeth in the house of Haman. So they hanged Haman on the gallows that he had prepared for Mordecai. All right, that was fun. Let's see, let's say Haman one more time. <laughs> okay, great job. Anyway, that is one of the ways uh, that they celebrate uh, Purim. And uh, we're going to end our lesson with that and our Bible verse, and then we're going to talk just for a minute about what uh, we have learned from, oh, what we've learned from Esther. Okay, so I'm going to read this, and you can read it with me if you want to. It's from Acts 17, 26, and this is uh, Paul speaking. He's talking about God, uh, so <clears throat> God's name is not in the verse, but he has just said something about him in the verse before it. And says, and hath made of one blood all nations of men for to dwell in all the face of the earth and hath determined the times before appointed and the bounds of their habitation. 
and that's Acts 17, 26. And we compared that to Mordecai telling Esther that she had probably been brought to the palace for such a time as this. And then we talked about um, the devotion that I read about the divine relay and that each generation is carrying the baton and handing it off to the next generation. We talked about how uh, Elijah, who we studied 800 years ago, was carrying the baton, and then Esther, I'm not 800 years ago, 800 B.C., and then Esther in 400 B.C., and then Peter and Paul, and on down through the ages, and that now it is your turn and my turn to carry the baton. And um, <clears throat> to carry the baton, what do we have to do? First of all, we have to know God, and the way we know God is by uh, asking Jesus to be our Savior, to trust Him, and then we have to spend time in His Word and spend time praying and spend time with other Christians and uh, grow, and as God reveals, <clears throat> He doesn't reveal everything to us all at once. Uh, if you remember Elijah, He just told him one thing at a time to do. So from the book of Esther, we can learn a lot of things, but I was trying to think of four things I wanted you to remember, and one <clears throat> is that God keeps his promises. God had promised Abraham and Isaac and Jacob that he would preserve the Jews down through the ages, and here they were in this impossible situation, and he preserved them. Okay, number two, uh, he is almighty. He can do anything. Like I said, this situation looked impossible, but they got rid of Haman, and they made a new law, and the Jews prevailed. Number three is God uses people. The Bible tells us that Elijah was just a man, just like we are. And we know that Esther was probably a 15, maybe 16-year-old girl who went to the palace. Uh, <clears throat> so she was, I mean, she was made queen, but before she was queen, she was just an ordinary person like you and me. So God uses people. And uh, if we want to be used by God, we just need to be willing to do what he asks us to do. He asked Elijah to do some pretty difficult things. And he asked uh, Esther to do some pretty difficult things. And he'll probably ask us to do some pretty difficult things. And that was one, two, three. And then number four was God answers prayer. Uh, because when the Jews prayed and fasted, God answered their prayer for deliverance. So I want you to remember those four things. That um, <clears throat> God answers prayer. God keeps his promises. God uses people. And God can do anything. And <clears throat> I am glad that you are here. Uh, we are going to um, close in prayer. And then, before you leave, I'm going to say that name one more time, okay? All right, let's pray. Heavenly Father, we thank you for um, the fact that you answer prayer, the fact that you use people, the fact that you keep your promises, and the fact that you can do anything. We thank you for Jesus, uh, who is our door to you and to heaven. And Lord, we thank you for the story of Esther, the history that we learn here. And we thank you, Lord, that you have given us celebrations where we can remember the things uh, that you have done for us. And uh, I just pray that you would go with us this week and help us to listen for your spirit. In Jesus' name, amen. Okay, and by the way, this is a Jewish celebration, but we Christians have a lot of celebrations too. Okay, is everybody ready? Amen! <laughs> <laughs> We're going to sing one more song here. I hope you guys got something from the lesson today with Miss Gale. Uh, the last song we're going to sing, though, is Thank You, Lord, for Saving My Soul, okay? So here we go. Thank you, Lord, for saving my soul. Thank you, Lord, for making me whole. salvation so rich 
and free. Let's sing it one more time a cappella. Thank you, Lord, for saving my soul. Thank you, Lord, for making me whole. Thank you, Lord, for giving to me thy great salvation so rich and free. Thank you guys for joining us today. I hope you guys have a great rest of your day.